Greetings, brethren. I would like to cover uh, David Daniels' video where he explains the meaning of repent, because a few days ago, Brother uh, Philip went through uh, chick tracks and, uh, you know, exposing the, the false gospel message in the back of chick tracks. And uh, I posted a link to this video and he kind of got confused. He made another video asking what what he what point that he wanted to, him to look at. I didn't really expect him to cover it. But um, so that just made me decide to cover it anyways. Um, I didn't really mean for him to cover anything. I just wanted him to know how uh, David Daniels uh, defines repentance and what he says, exactly what he says about it. Um, so I'll, I'll explain, uh, if you really didn't get the point, what he meant about this tricky word, it's not a tricky word that's hard, hard to understand, but he does make the point that people change the meaning into, uh, clean up your life or forsaking your sins or in order to be saved that people change the meaning to uh repenting of sins like i repent of uh robbery or fornication no he, he doesn't say he makes the point that it, that they change the meaning of repentance to repentance of like forsaken sins and stuff like that. That was his whole point of why it's called the tricky word, repent. And he says, it's not, a, it doesn't mean that. It means to turn. So yeah, yeah. So that's what his point was. <laughs> not to, that people change it into forsaking sins and rather than uh, turning or changing your mind. He actually explicitly say that, specifically says that, that it's, that it's a turning, uh, changing your mind. He says, change your mind. Um, but the difference is, the real problem is, because he works for Trick Tracks, um, the real problem is that he endorses these Trick Tracks chick tracks and they have a false gospel in the back of them and i will share share the screen now i want to give you a background that uh david daniels just works for this company called chick tracks a guy named jack chick started it um he I mean, he has helped in writing some of them, like the, I can't remember, I think it's the Halloween one, maybe Boo, or some something uh, dealing with hell or Satan. He does not write Chick Tracks. I mean, he has helped in the past. Um, but there's a new Chick Track that actually he wrote from start to finish. But he still includes something that he did not write, the Salvation Message. Um, this is a new chick track called Snowflake, and he wrote it, C.D. David W. Daniels. So that's the one he did write. Um, but this is the problem here. Because of, uh, the late 20th century of how people uh, go about explaining the gospel. They use this cer certain term term terminology, which is just a helping phraseology, but it, it's oft often misleading. Um, it's often not a correct, uh, pure way of explaining the gospel. Um, but so, um, but the, it, certain things like invite 
is this in your to your heart or uh, ask Jesus into your life. It's just fragility to help to lead in uh, people into uh, into uh, accepting Jesus. I mean, it's just uh, kind of a way to present it. But yes, it is a false way to present it, but that's how they use, that's just the language phraseology that they use in the past, but it's a false way to uh, present it. Um, so we have here, this is what, what the problem is. He endorses chick tracks and uh, they have a, the salvation message, which is not totally right. You got Romans 10, 9, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised, hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I mean, that, 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 is, a, that is true um, that you have to believe who Jesus is and that he rose from the dead, but that's not the whole gospel, and that's not the exact gospel. Um, and it's a, in a different reference. It's reference to uh, what Israel failed to do. They failed to admit that he was the Messiah and the proof for the re uh, of the resurrection. They denied their Messiah and the resurrection. Admit that you're, you're a sinner. Um... Yeah, yeah, um, you have to, well, to explain it before I say that, uh, you don't, know, like in a co confessional, like in a confessional prayer, no. But admitting is conviction, you admit that you are guilty, I mean, to yourself, I mean, to God, I mean, you realize it's a realization. It's not like you're confessing, make, making a confessional. Uh, I'm a sinner, but you have to realize, yes, you you have sinned, because if you do not realize that you are a sinner, why do you need to be saved? You need need to know that you need a savior. <laughs> but yeah, it's not confessional. It's like the realization. Yes, I'm guilty. But uh, in that language, in that presentation, yes, uh, I, I'm not trying to be double tongued, so I'll just stick to <clears throat> the presentation. Um, admit that you're sinner. It's in a confessional sinner's prayer. So no, you, it's not that you admit that you're a sinner that saves you in the sinner's prayer. But you have to realize you're guilty. So, anyways. Be willing to turn from sin. You have to realize that you drop whatever is keeping you from God. Drop your sin and turn to God, yes. But to be willing to turn to sin uh, communicates obedience. And obedience is not part of the gospel. Obedience is in your walk with God. So obedience is not the gospel. Uh, three, believe that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried and rose again. He uses Romans 10, 9, 10, which is not what you should use. And through prayer, invite Jesus into your heart, become your personal savior. And no, you don't invite. The only one thing that's close enough is in Revelation, uh, about knocking at the door of your heart, inviting him, and you will sup in him. But that's in the revelation. That's not uh, in the dispensation of grace. And he quotes Romans 10, 13, calling upon the name of the Lord. So, no. <laughs> you must call upon the name of the Lord. Pray. Call out to him. So that's false. So one, two, and... Part of three, the one is false, number two is false, 
three is false in the reference, in the scriptural reference. Four is false both in the description and reference. And he has a sinner's prayer. And yeah, it's not that you have to pray, you know. Like the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts 8, 37, he says, what, what hinders me from being baptized? Well, if, thy, if you believe all in thine heart, thou mayest. I'll believe that the son, that Jesus is the son of God. I mean, you have that language. Yes, he confessed, but he believed and baptized. So he did not pray. And I, I don't see it really in a prayer anywhere. I don't think. I'm not aware of anywhere that you that you see in the scriptures that the that Jesus led them in a prayer or that um, the apostles led them in prayer. But anyways, um, let's see, let's let's if I've already covered all that I wanted to <laughs> um, in this part, uh, I think so. Um, let's just go to. The, the video itself. A few days ago, the Lord put on my heart to explain why we so carefully word page 23 of our tracks. That is carefully word. I've well, I did. Re I mean, I've looked on a few, see the older ones before he written his. His track has the same salvation message in the back page as the older ones. So, carefully written. I'm not totally sure that you carefully written it. <laughs> that it's carefully written. Um, in your I think it's in the second step, I would say be willing to turn to God. That's better written, I think, because of the old language that obedience is part of the gospel. This is where it presents the reader with the steps to getting saved. Of course, this is highly controversial. It has to do with repentance in salvation. Are there more than one type of repentance in scripture? If so, how can we know which is which? And how does that affect what's on page 23 of our tracks? You may want the subtitles on for this. Um, yeah, I, sort of. Yes, there's God's repentance. God repented, but not of sin or any, any such thing. His repentance is changing his mind. Um, repentance and salvation, sorry to say. It's not the godly sorrow. It's not the sorrow itself. The conviction leads to repentance, but the repentance is what you're changing your mind about that's a whole uh a very uh intentional or yeah intentional heartfelt saying well i'm gonna turn to god i believe the gospel and i turn to god i believe what uh god's word says about me i'm a sinner and stuff like that but uh, God's repentance is it's just a changing of mind, Ch changing of mind of what he was doing. Um, but, I mean, changing his mind, he turned from what he was doing. Repentance is changing your mind about yourself and changing your mind about God and putting your faith in Jesus Christ. Well, repentance is not faith. Repentance is just you know, change your mind 
wholeheartedly, uh, you know, that you really mean it towards God and who you are and change your mind believing the gospel. So, yeah. So it's just not saying, well, I, I don't believe that Jesus died on, uh, I don't believe such thing as Jesus. But now I believe in a such thing as a, as a Jesus or as a God. That's why people really um, boil it down to. And it is, is like damaging because you see, I, I've seen uh, without naming any names, but uh, the, the crowd, the, the hyper grace crowd, I would say, um, like those who uh, associate with Jack Smack, that all you have to do is believe in the promises of Jesus. There is no no such thing as believing that Jesus died on your on the cross. That there's no such thing as oh you don't have to believe that you saved from nothing anything. You don't have to believe that you are a sinner. Uh, you don't have to have conviction of your sin. There's no conviction, just believe in the promises of Jesus. And that's it. And that's why it's damaging. Because you just say, well, it's a turn. I believe that the promises of Jesus. I don't have to believe the cross. I don't believe have to believe what God says about me, that I am not righteous, and I can't save myself, and uh, I'm a sinner, and stuff like that. All you have to believe is promises of Jesus. That's hyper grace, and that's why it's kind of damaging when you just say, well, it's unbelief to belief. I believe in the promises of Jesus. No, you have to believe that what God says about you and believe the gospel. The whole thing, the whole, um, the whole embodiment of the gospel. All right, anyways. I talked enough. Um, let's go on. And you may want to get your Bible. and Check the verses for yourself. Hi, I'm David Daniels for Chick Publications. Why do we have the word repent in our tracts at all? First, is repentance important? I take seriously the verses of scripture that mention all the world, or all men must repent, meaning all men and women and young people who are above the age. Yep. There's a such thing as repentance, and God commands us to repent. It is important. Of accountability. Here are... Because... Um, if you say there's no repentance, then everyone's saved, in, uh, like the whole world's saved without even hearing the gospel. You repent to believe the gospel. So it's, it's part of the process. You change your mind, oh, I believe the gospel now. So if you're saying it's not important, uh, there's no such thing as repentance, yeah, <laughs> then uh, uh you know, then uh, everybody is saved without hearing the gospel. They don't have to change their mind. It's a covenant. They said, well, uh, I admit, I, I realized I've done wrong, and I need Jesus. If you don't believe, believe that you need Jesus, <laughs> then you won't receive the covenant. The, the, the new covenant established in his blood. You have to believe in that the covenant is like, well, yes, I, this is who I am, and believe that uh, Jesus, Jesus' blood is that atonement for what I failed to do. So, yeah, anyways. 
five verses where repentance is taught for all people, both Jews and Gentiles. Number one, Acts eleven eighteen, quote, when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life, end quote. These are Hebrew Christians, apostles and elders, realizing God has granted to Gentiles repentance unto life, end quote. Number two, Acts 17, 30, quote, And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, end quote. Okay, the context of that is idolatry. They were serving other gods, so the repentance is turning from the idolatry and believe in the right God that is Jesus Christ and after they heard the commandment that God commands all people everywhere to repent and they and they mocked the resurrection so yes it's a turning from their false gods to the true God and believing in Jesus so turning from unbelief of the true God to believe in the true God and turning from their false gods, idolatry, from their sin, I guess, sin of idolatry, but um, turning to, to the true God. I cannot get around all men everywhere. If all men everywhere do not repent, all men everywhere are not obeying God's commandment. I'm just showing what the scripture says. Number three, Paul testified to the elders of Ephesus how he held back nothing from them that was profitable, teaching publicly and house to house. Acts 20:21, 20, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, end quote. Note the direction toward, repentance toward God, faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Both Jews and Greeks had to repent toward God and have faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. Number four. When Paul testified to King Agrippa, he told what he had done in response to the heavenly vision of Jesus. Acts 26, 20, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works, meet, for repentance, end quote. Jews and Gentiles should repent and turn to God, period. Then after they're saved, they should do, do works, meet appropriate, for repentance. Those works follow the repentance after they're saved. In that light, God said to Paul in 2 Corinthians 7 verse 10, Quote, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death, end quote. So repentance is not godly sorrow. Godly sorrow comes before repentance. Quote, godly sorrow worketh repentance, end quote. Number five. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the verse that he used was in the context of sanctification, but it, it is true that conviction or godly sorrow works in you to repent 
but um, in the previous chapter, they said, um, do, do not be yoked up with unbelievers. And the, the very first um, chapter is to cleanse yourself of all filthiness of both uh, this, the um, this flesh and the spirit. So the uncleanliness, the works of the flesh, and uh, the the kind of um, defilement of your mind, what defiles your mind, uh, the, your demeanor, the, the things that you have, you know you think about. But anyways, um, repentance does follow conviction or guilt. It is a guilt. Conviction is a guilt, and. Uh, I'll show you Acts 2, 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. So, conviction. They felt guilty. That's what... Uh, what the conviction is not they were convinced that they have wronged that they realized they are wrong and they regretted this they were pricked in the heart um oops Very six, therefore, all the house of Israel, I know surely that God hath made the same Jesus whom ye crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Christ, of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So they were convicted, but it's not conviction is not repentance because then they repent. They was told to repent, change your mind. But conviction does precede the changing your mind or turning from what you've been doing turn uh change your mind which causes the turn but you you see uh what was it the particle son that he he cried and was was guilty but found no repentance he did not turn from what he was doing he did not uh change his mind he was sorry but he did not uh, really change his mind about what he did so it's not the sorrow because he was sorry it's not the action well he didn't uh, change I guess it's not the action it's changing your mind relinquishing that changing your mind you know, yeah. Um, so it does cut me godly sorrow, or not godly sorrow, but conviction. They were pricked in their heart and they repented. But uh, that's what happens before. It's not what repentance is. Uh, repentance changes your mind, which causes the action of turning and the action of. Uh, turning from those things, but it's always accompanying to turning from something. You change your mind about God, you turn to God. You, you, repentance towards God, so you're turning towards God, to, believing in the, and faith to uh, Lord Jesus Christ. So you're turning, you're dropping what you're doing 
and you're believing in Jesus Christ. So you want to change your mind and that causes you to believe in Jesus Christ, which the action is the turning towards him for your salvation. But anyways, yeah. Second Peter three, verse nine. God said through the apostle Peter, quote, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, end quote. God wants all to come to repentance. God didn't even mention faith there. But here's the bottom line. Whatever repent means, all men everywhere, both Jews and Gentiles, are commanded to do it. Here's what we find in these five verses about. Yes, and people, uh, people fail to realize this. The death of the testator is when it's established so the the new covenant established in the christ blood after he resurrected is when the covenant is instated so we find in the scriptures both jew and gentile is is applicable to jew and gentile but uh there's some things yes there's some things uh referred to the nation of israel or children of israel but uh, the gospel sense there's not like a separate uh, gospel message to the Jew and separate to the Gentile. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, yes, you got preaching of Peter and of Paul, but the, the what's applicable uh, because the, what's different is what you know. What it takes to preach to them for them to believe, but um, the 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 stipulations is Jew and Greek, and there's really no difference between like like one special over the other. They have to believe in the gospel, whether or what message what gets them to believe it is different i guess from peter paul but i'm not trying to be double double tongue or die, double mind to kind of eat my words but yeah um but yeah i'm just saying yeah the gospel is applicable to jew and gentile it's not a special program a special program for the Jew and a special program for the Gentile in the dispensation of grace, I mean. And the dispensation of grace, there's not a special program for the Jew to be saved and uh, for Gentile to be saved. But yeah, there is preaching, I guess, to what, so they would respond you see that difference between the preaching of Peter and the preaching of Paul. But in the dispensation of grace, yes, um, the, the the program is the same because there's no there's a difference be, between the Jew and the Greek. So we both have to repent, change your mind towards God, and believe G Jesus, the gospel. Repentance. One, it's granted by God, Acts 11, 18. Two, it's commanded by God, Acts 17, 30. Three, it is repentance toward God, Acts 20, 21. Four, it goes with faith toward Jesus Christ, Acts 20, 21. Five, it goes with turning to God, Acts 20, 21. Six, it comes before doing works, meet for repentance, also Acts 20. 2021 7 the lord is willing that all should come to repentance second peter 3 verse 9 if we take out repentance we are missing something that god commands all men ever um 
just to point out um, this kind of idea that in the Gospel of John, there's no repentance, so therefore it's not part of the Gospel. Um, you can't really just isolate the preaching um, because um, even Paul said, you know, when, uh, what was it, in Hebrews 6, that not laying, again, the foundation from uh, repentance from dead works, um, he, he was saying about your, your walk with God, not that, uh, when you sin, you have to repent and crucify Jesus Christ anew uh, from dead works. You just, uh, you know, repent and keep on following Jesus Christ. You repent, change your mind, and turn back to Jesus Christ. But uh, it's not saying that repentance is not part of the gospel at all. At first, there was preaching of repentance, but they, that was before that was before Jesus, and uh, Jesus said, "Repent." But um, you can't just isolate it to the Gospel of John. You can't, you can't just isolate the Gospel of John. Well, there's no repentance, so you don't have to repent. Just believe in the promises of Jesus. Well. That's what you get with hyper grace, but uh, just believe in the gospel. You don't have to realize that you're a sinner or anything. Repentance is not part of the gospel. But you can't isolate it. Repentance is, is the result of believing the gospel. So repentance is evolved somehow. But it's not the preaching of the gospel, the pure gospel. It, it's, it's the result of believing the gospel. So you can't just say repentance is not involved at all. It's a heresy to preach that repentance is a, is uh, is involved at all because there's no such word in the Gospel of John. No, it's a result of believing the gospel. So yeah, yeah. Anyways, I'm talking to rambling too much. I'm sorry. Everywhere to do. tell us to take it out of our tracks because it communicates willingness to turn from sins because that's what the old preaching communicates uh, a willingness to for obedience obedience it has really it's not that in it's not part of the gospel that you must be obedient to Jesus to be saved. Obedience comes in your walk, but is there's no such preaching that you must be obedient to Jesus. Better written is because it's not uh, it's poorly written. Uh, it, you should say the willingness to turn to God. If anything, according to these scriptures, are we obeying God if we take repentance out of our tracks? Or would we be making what people want more important than what God says? You can decide for you more important um what god says um no you shouldn't strike it from your gospel message of repent but uh, the the kind of parentheses which communicates this that you have to be willing to forsake like obedience like you have to vow that i will live a changed life that's, that's what it communicates. You have to vow you will live a changed life. That's not part of the gospel. Repentance is just changing your mind. 
that you believe what God says about that you're a sinner and you turn to God when you believe the gospel. I'm talking about me here. One day I have to stand before Jesus and explain what I did with his words. I don't want to say that I used my theology to justify disobeying God's words. That's why you don't see me thumbing through theology books. I'm going through the book very carefully. I don't want to make a mistake on something as important as this. So you see, we want to obey and tell people to repent. Uh, you do thumb through this. Well, you thumb, thumb through books. Yes. So you can't say you don't go through books. Books of men. Because you do have books of men that you do read. as God said. But that leads us to the next point. First, is repentance important? Yes. Second, what is repentance? I've gone over every verse on repentance in the scriptures, and I see three kinds that have to do with God and man. Type one is God's repentance. When God repents, he turns from what he said he would do, for good or for ill, based on humans' response to him. Jeremiah 18, verses 7 to 10, quote, At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it, if it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, that I will repent of the good wherewith, sure. wherewith I said I would benefit them. End quote. So he does see his emotion. He is communicating. It means turn. When God repents, he turns from what he said he would do, for good or for ill, based on humans' response to him. That is type one, God's repentance. Type two is unsaved man's repentance. By man, God means everyone created from Adam onward, male and female. Unsaved humans repent toward God by turning from their state of unbelief and whatever they trusted in, in their sinful state. From that, they turn to trust Jesus. See, so he did say <clears throat> how... Uh, our group uh, communicates the kind of uh, repentance, unbelief to belief. So he did say that. So really just the, the problem here is that he's connected to chick tracks and the salvation message, which he did not write. He didn't write the salvation message, but he's connected to it. And uh, he defends it while well, he's defended it defends it, but he did not write it. So yes, connected to Chick Tracks and he defends it, but he did not write it. So yes, he got a point there, but uh, he, in his video, he does communicate what uh, our group communicates of what repentance is. The Lord Jesus Christ described it like this. John 3, verses 14 to 15, quote, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, 
but have eternal life, end quote. Jesus compared himself to the serpent lifted up on the pole in the wilderness. That's in Numbers 21, verses 7 to 9. People were bitten by fiery serpents. God said, quote, that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. That's like what we find in Isaiah 45, 22, quote, Look unto me, and be ye saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else, end quote. So they had to turn to look unto, behold, the serpent on the pole. We have to turn from whatever we're trusting in or are or, or wrapped up in to look unto Jesus. See, wherever we're wrapped in, turn from that to turn to Jesus. So he describes it as a turning. Turning from our sinful state and whatever we're trusting in to turn toward Jesus to trust him. That's repentance type Two, turning and looking upon leads to life. No, oh, this is not like uh, probably uh, he's not really communicating like you know cleaning up your life. T turning is what he's saying to look upon. See, he goes like this: turning from what you're looking in, from what you're looking at, to turning. What you're looking at, Jesus. So that's what he's communicating there. Not the, the actual action of uh, turning. Turning in your action, you know, happens and, uh, after repentance. In Numbers 21, it led to physical life. In the gospel, it leads to eternal life. Now, some say repentance means listing off all your sins to God. Do we have to list off all our sins in order to be saved? That's impossible. Dealing with individual sins is repentance type 3. Repentance type 3 is only for saved people. Unsaved people can list off sins to their heart's content, but it won't save them. However, at the time of conversion, when God convicts someone's heart, there can be specific sins. So I want to stop it before it gets too far. Um, the, the definition number three is repentance and sanctification. So that's why he's communicating there before it gets to, uh, you know, that at the time of conversion, there is conviction of certain sins because that's what it communicates. Um, the gospel communicates that you are a sinner. So whatever God convicts you on the type of, uh, uh, convicts you in that causes you to repent. Yes, he deals with those sins because that's what convicts you. Um, but yeah. Uh, he's just saying, but anyways. That the Holy Ghost may bring up, but that's between him or her and God. I have no... Just, uh, I'm guessing that what brings you repentance, yes. <laughs> but it's not cleaning up your life, it's just convicting, conviction. So whatever brings you to repentance... That's basically what it is. Whatever brings you to repentance, you know, you realize whatever you realize, it, it, there's conviction that you you are not righteous, and there's conviction. Oh, I'm not righteous because of this. Um, so at time conversion, yes, there's certain sins. Then you clean them up, clean up your life, and you walk in your sanctification. So yes, no right to judge that. I'll let God deal with them. In Acts 9.4, in Saul's conversion, Jesus brought a specific sin directly before him. Acts 9.4, quote, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? End quote. Though I'm sure that was not Saul's only sin. 
But what if in that time of conviction before God, people do list off sins? Does that mean they got saved by works? People have actually told me this. No, that's their human response to the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. In a sinner's prayer, trusting that, instead of trusting, you know, a, I mean, I'm not the one to agree that it will keep you from salvation, that it will di totally disqualify. Oh, you admitted that you're, that you fornicated, so you, you're not saved. You can't be saved be in this experience. I'm not the one to say it disqualifies you, but it is not, you do not preach that, that you have to pray a sinner's prayer. That uh, you have to lift off your sins. He doesn't agree with that either, but I'm not one that it will disqualify you because it, but what disqualifies you is that you're trusting in because you listed your sins. That's what saves you. But if you're, that, that's what, what disqualifies you. But whatever you're trusting in, if you're trusting in the gospel and in result that you list off, i not one. If, if you're trusting in the gospel and in result you confess sins, I'm not the one that uh, agrees with that it will disqualify and keep you from salvation if you list off your sins when you're solely trusting in salvation. So, I don't know. In John 16, 7 to 8, Jesus said, quote, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. End quote. After Jesus ascended to heaven, he sent the Holy Ghost with a job to do, to reprove the world. Reprove means show what you did wrong. Other Bible verses say rebuke, convince, tell him his fault, even convict. The Holy Ghost's job is to reprove the world of three things. One, sin. John 16, 9, quote, of sin because they believe not on me, end quote. We are sinners, and the biggest sin is to refuse to believe on Jesus Christ. If we don't believe on Jesus Christ, <laughs> refuse to believe in Jesus Christ. Believe God. So there, there you have that part that he actually says this. Jesus Christ, we cannot have our sins forgiven. Two, righteousness. John 16, 10. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Jesus was the perfect example of righteousness. Everything not. Okay, yes, yes. So he, he, the Holy Spirit convinces you. To believe that he is the only God, he convinces you that you are what what God says about that you are a sinner and of judgment, and that you're not righteous. Or there's a standard of righteousness that you're not righteous. So yes, it convinces of all your things. First of all, is from uh, believing in the correct God. That's first of all. And in the in the result, the following uh, convince you are sinner, um, and a judgment, and that you're not righteous. So yes, he convinces you of that. Not like Jesus is unrighteous, and Jesus told us what righteousness is. Since Christ ascended to heaven, he sent the Holy Ghost to do the job with every man, woman, boy, and girl on earth. Through the gospel, the Holy Ghost convicts us that Jesus is absolutely righteous, and we are sinners. And because of that, three, judgment. John 16, 11, quote, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. 
The Holy Ghost brings to mind the coming judgment day. Satan is going down, but so is anyone else who refuses to put his or her faith in Christ Jesus. What do the Holy Ghost's reproofs do? You're convicted just like in a court of law. God has every right to sentence you to hell and the lake of fire. What is our response? So you see, the gospel convinces you, and then in the result, it convicts you. Thus you repent, thus you put your faith in Jesus Christ. So yes, uh, the, well, the gospel convinces you of the, these things, and you feel convicted, and you believe in Jesus Christ. Do we simply repeat some words so the punishment goes away? Or do we place our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his mercy? He shed his blood for our sins to pay the price for us to be forgiven and go to heaven. In many people, that is an emotional moment. I hope so. It affects where you will spend eternity. What do you do as a soul winner? What do you want a lost soul to do? To be serious with God at this point. Right here, I must tell you a story. Years ago, a Baptist minister from Vista, a city north of San Diego, had lunch with Jack Chick and me over at our Chick-fil-A. He told us how he loved our Chick tracks, and he contrasted them with something that happened to him some years earlier. He's with a bunch of guys who are out saving souls. Or so they said. They had their clipboards in hand, and they went from house to house asking questions of the people. So far, so good. But when they asked people questions, they marked off their answers, then at some point led the person in a prayer of some sort. The minister told us about this one house that really opened his eyes. There was a man mowing his lawn. He didn't even slow down the whole time. The guy with a clipboard read down his list, and the mowing guy just grunted. And the man checked another item on his clipboard. So it went like this. Blah, 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 blah. Grunt. Check mark. Blah, 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 blah. Grunt. Check mark. Finally, it came time to the salvation prayer. Clipboard guy didn't miss a beat. He didn't even wait. Once he got the grunt at the right spot, he went into the salvation prayer, and the guy on cue grunted. Or at least clipboard guy said he did. Then he walked away saying something like, we got another one. Brothers and sisters, a precious soul is not a check on a clipboard. This is far worse than any one, two, three, repeat after me stories I've heard. That was a swindle, a con. That was a check on the clipboard. It did nothing for the mowing guy, except maybe sour him to the gospel. Can you hear him? If that's all there is to their belief, they can have it. And so he condemns just like uh, the, the quick prayerism, the, the, the Baptist soul winner that um, that uh, he just, uh, you know, with their checkboard, that uh, just quick prayerism, just uh, pray, repeat after me. He condemns that too. So. <laughs> There's something there, and just from hearing the gospel and praying a prayer, he doesn't believe in just praying a prayer. So, but uh, why uh, he still connects himself to Chick Tract, which has that uh, sinner's prayer, that's what condemns him. But why he made this video is not because of that, uh, just because of the meaning of repentance, as in changing your life that's that is his whole point of making this video that people change the, the definition of repentance to a changed life or a uh, i mean the definition as in forsaking sins and not cha uh, changing it from the true meaning of 
change your mind or turn to uh, forsake your sins. And that's what he, his whole point was. And if that is all that was to his belief, I'd agree with him. Some Christian workers in the name of evangelism are too prone to pump up the numbers instead of looking for people who actually want to be saved and are convicted having been reproved okay uh the nfib probably does the same exact thing because they're baptists or soul winners look how many soul, souls i saved we got to do soul winning um how do, do you know that you saved these m many people Look how we went soul winning. We saved this amount of people. How do you know that? <laughs> it's just a check on the checkboards. Kind of follows the same pattern. I am not exactly know the experience, what uh, Stephen Anderson does in a soul winning that they really, that they really believe or that's just uh, a, a kind of the same exact thing as what the, the soul winners and past have done, so I don't know, but it seems to me that they follow the same pattern as the old Baptists that uh, uh, sinner's prayer, quick prayerism, check mark, and we we have won a soul. <laughs> so, anyways, of the Holy Ghost, if we really believe the scriptures that the Holy Ghost, the comforter of John 14 to 16 acts on the heart of the unsaved. What would be the result? Acts on the Holy Ghost and are convicted having been reproved too prone to pump up the numbers instead of looking for people who actually want to be saved and are convicted having been reproved of the Holy Ghost. If we really believe the scriptures that the Holy Ghost the comforter of John 14 to 16 acts on the heart of the unsaved. What would be the result? If God the Holy Ghost convicted you, you would be convicted just like in a court of law, but the Holy Ghost acts on the heart. If you had an encounter with God, the almighty and powerful and holy God, and he showed you your sinfulness, Jesus Christ's righteousness, and the coming judgment. Wouldn't you feel just a little unclean? Peter got the smallest whiff of who Jesus was. And what happened? Quote, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. End quote, Luke 5, 8. Isaiah got a vision of Christ on the throne. Quote, then it said, I, woe is me, for I am undone because of a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts, end quote, Isaiah 6, 5. We put one simple way to check the status of that soul in step two. Question, is that soul under conviction or not? And it's really simple. Are they willing to deal with their sins? That can only be done by a saved person. That's type 3 repentance. To be saved. Okay. Um, hopefully it, it uh, is still recording in the same, same part. Um, being willing... To turn it for him, he says that if there's any conviction, yes, we missed the point of uh, people in the past, the late 20th century, they think obedience to change your life is part of the gospel. That's what it communicates, not to just mainly conviction. So that that's why we say it communicates wrong, because the the preachers of the late 20th century, especially in the 1990s, you know, that you have to, you are, it communicates obedience, like a changed life, obedience. That's willing. So better in 
willingness to turn to God. That is repentance. And uh, I don't know, I guess that's my um, uh, idea. I don't know. But yeah, the, it, there is conviction. So maybe you just read it as um, conviction or something. But yeah, hopefully it's still recording. Are they willing to deal with their sins? That can only be done by a same person. That's type three repentance. Only saved people get to deal with sins with their loving and faithful father. But if the person is not even willing to repent, then he or she is not ready to be saved. When Jesus went to heal people, he didn't heal those who were not willing. John 5 verse 6, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said, saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? End quote. When the blind man called out to Jesus, Jesus responded, Luke 18, 41, quote, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? End quote. And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. They were powerless to help themselves, but Jesus asked them what they wanted, and they knew what they wanted, and they told him. But some people say, isn't being willing a work? Scripture has the answer. I read to you about God already. 2 Peter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. End quote. But does God being willing? that they all come to repentance, make them all come to repentance? No, but it is an open door. It's just like Jesus talking to the paralytic by the pool and the blind man by Jericho. He asked them what they willed, but they were powerless to do it. Oh, but God is powerful. Yeah, you know, just saying, well, yeah, in a sense, but that, that's uh, in a sense to turning to God, that you're be willing to turn to God for for salvation. That you you stop relying on yourself to say you rely on God. That that is the, the the willingness. But the willingness, I mean, a sin really is not what repentance is. Conviction. And repentance, that you'd be willing to change your mind about it, be willing to turn to God, put your place, faith in. I mean, you don't really have to really communicate that because the conviction and will either, they will either ignore or, or uh, you know, not ignore, it, but yeah. There is a conviction and a willingness to believe in Jesus to turn to God, yes, but um, willingness to s turn for sins communicates, I mean, yes, but it communicates uh, as a changing their life. You vow to change your life. That's not the gospel. Willingness to turn to God, yes. Um, willingness to turn from sin, that you change your mind, that you uh, know. Believe, believe in Jesus. Yeah. Even Paul willed a good work. I mean, what I was trying to say, yes, um, what it communicates is obedience, as, as in you're vowing that you live a changed life. That's not the gospel, but willingness to, real, to, to say to realize about yourself that you are a sinner and the willingness to turn to God to put faith in Jesus Christ. Yes, that is, that is true. I mean, yes, you should, uh, but that's not, we really don't have to um, communicate that, uh, put that in the presentation because it's either the, the, you believe or you don't believe. Willingness to come to God. But anyways, yes, it is, but it's not, 
a, a vow to live a changed life. Are you willing to say, yeah, admit, yes, I'm a sinner and I need you? Willingness to come to God, place in Jesus Christ. But it, the old preaching is, you know, vowing a vow to live a changed life. But he was powerless to perform it. Romans 7, verse 18, quote, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. End quote. Paul could will all he wanted, but that didn't make him perform the good. So being willing isn't a work by any stretch of the imagination. It's simply the open door to the possibility of good works. But if a person is not willing to turn from his or her sins, that person is not yet ready to be saved from his or her sins. So just because someone puts up a web page and redefines our words, it doesn't mean we left the gospel. You didn't re redefine you. The, 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 the problem is the preaching of the, 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 recent, the recent past, that uh, the willingness to forsake sins, that you have to vow, vow, I'll live a changed life. That's obedience. That's not what it, the gospel communicates. Repentance is not a vow of obedience that you'll live a changed life. Repentance is changing your mind about God and who you are and placing your faith in Jesus Christ. Well, that's not part of, that's a result. The faith is a result of repentance, but you change your, you believe that what God says about you, you're a sinner and you change your mind about who God is change your mind to turn to God, and in result of that, you place your faith, and that's, uh, you place your faith in Jesus, that's your response. But as a result, your response is the result of your repentance. It means instead that he made us say something we never did. He will have to deal with that with Jesus, and Jesus won't look at that website. Jesus will look, look at his heart. Anyways, so that's what I just wanted to cover. That um, I just wanted to cover that to show you what he says. Um, it's because, I mean, his point was that. Uh, he made, he probably, I'm guessing, so let's just say that I'm guessing how I took it, that uh, his response, uh, whole intent was because people redefine repentance as in forsaking sins or living a changed life, because you do see that, that he defines it as turning, changing your mind. But what... What's the problem here? He he uh, aligns himself with chick tra uh, chick uh, chick track chick publications, and he defends that salvation message, which he thinks it does not communicate the the kind of vowing a changed life. He's like, they redefined uh, my words, uh, these words. No, it's the preaching of the late 20th century that your willingness to forsake sins, your vowing vow to live a changed life. Obedience is not part of the gospel. It is a result of the gospel, but it's not the gospel itself. Um, obedience to Jesus Christ that you vow, I'll live a changed life. But yeah. Um, but I, I want to 
people realize the, the dangers of the kind of preaching from unbelief to belief without really explaining it further, I would at least say unbelief, whatever keeping you from there, unbelief that unbelief to believe that you are a sinner and unbelief to believe that you uh, about God and the gospel, not just saying unbelief to a belief is repentance because it communicates well now I I went from not believing such thing as a God to believing there's such a thing as God and now I went from not believing the promise of Jesus to believe in promises of Jesus. You see that in Jack Smack and his associates. I'm seeing that in um, this other one that was, uh, um, okay, I'll, I'll say, put it this way, the, the guy, uh, Ministry of Reconciliation, the one from UK, uh, all is, the word it is Ministry of Reconciliation, not the Ministry of Reconciliation. He is from UK. His name is Bill, associated with Japs Mac. They, there is no conviction. Just believe the promises of Jesus and you'll be saved. That's the dangers of preaching unbelief to belief. I just believe the promises of Jesus, so I'm saved. Well, that's not the whole gospel that you have to believe, realize that you're a sinner and you're being saved from something. <laughs> I mean, the gospel is just not saying, well, Jesus says he'll save me, and I believe that. And you have to believe the death, burial, and resurrection, the cross, that uh, has shed his blood on the cross, and they don't believe that. So... I would say repentance, change of mind from what God says about you, that you are a sinner, change your mind that uh, um, to the one true God, turning to the one true God in response to the faith of the gospel and you believe, going, change your mind about uh, the gospel itself. So, yes. Um, so, I mean, the, the, that this um, repentance is not just basically turning because God just turned. There's a different definition when it comes to man that you're turning in changing your mind in the gospel. And the gospel entails that you're being saved from something, not just believing in the promises of Jesus. The, you you change your mind, you believe that what God says about you are a sinner, you're not righteous, you can't love yourself, and that uh, you regret that you're a sinner, and it is a heart-filled changing your mind, just not uh, agreeing with the gospel. You have to realize you are a sinner, and the cross atones for that sin. That's the gospel. But repentance is just make it clear without all that rambling. Repentance is a change of mind. Hope this helps you. And uh, well, let's just say one last thing. Conviction is involved with repentance, but it precedes repentance. It precedes repentance, but it is involved. A conviction, which is a guilt, a regret. You realize you are a sinner. A conviction is involved, but it's not repentance. Um, it precedes repentance. Change your mind, then you believe. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. So I hope this helps you. Thank you, and take care.